Hello sewing friends and welcome to another episode of Sequin Girly Creates. Today's episode is a Sunday Sews chatty catch up so if you'd like to hear some ideas and inspiration from what I've been up to then stick around. Hi everybody another week has gone by I can't believe it and I've got some daffodils here. Daffodils, I love them. It reminds me that spring, summer, hope is coming. <laughs> Even though I'm trying to embrace these other months, uh, it just, it reminds me of that. Let's start with what I'm wearing today. I have on an infinity scarf and this uh, dress, which I'll put a picture of in, I'm going to leave it here. Um, that is based on the Tilly and the Dump uh, Tilly and the Buttons Stella jumper, which I extended into a dress. This fabric is still available from Pound Fabrics. It's actually three ninety five a meter. So uh, if you like this, they do it in two other colourways. Do hop over and grab yourself some. I can highly recommend it. It's got a nice bit of stretch and it's soft to wear. I've made both a wide leg trouser and this dress and infinity scarf in it and it's really nice to work with so if you're looking for like a stable jersey to have a go at working with something I'd highly recommend this because it doesn't drift or shift and it doesn't overstretch either when you're using it so let's talk first of all about a pattern company that I found I'm always on the lookout as you know for interesting patterns and I was fiddling around on Instagram the other day, looking at some things, and I saw this really interesting pattern that someone had made. And then I saw the pattern company, which was called DP Studio. And it looks like that. And um, I went over and had a look. It is a French company, but they've got all their instructions in English as well. They've got some really interesting patterns that have detail that um, is sort of, built into the pattern so like a skirt with like a, a a ruched bit and this sweatshirt I've gone for now they number there so this is uh number 001 and there's the sweatshirt so you can see that down the sides of the sweatshirt and the sleeves there's like a shape so when you're looking at like combining two patterns um I thought that was really interesting because you then have down the sides of the sweatshirt and the sleeve the matching pattern um, I try and put a picture in here of a, of a made up one. The instructions do seem fairly clear. It's quite interesting seeing the different pieces, um, which I like. So you can see here how you've got the, the, the different sleeve pattern in there, sleeve piece. Size wise, they've got an extra small to an extra large. So they've got extra small, small, medium, medium, large. And then they've, so that means they go from a bust of 31 uh, and a quarter inches to a 43 and something into it's European, so their inches are not great. So basically, it goes from 79 centimeters to 111 centimeters with a bust and a waist of 759 centimeters to 91. So not the most size inclusive i would say however it is a sweatshirt so it probably um is a looser fit the description is a very sporty sweatshirt and a daily is a daily staple and is made with a hood that crosses over at the front or with a simple neckline and no hood it is oversized with back wing sleeves and an inserted kangaroo pocket oh wow that whole shape has a kangaroo pocket in it wow um, at the front with rounded seams you can play with contrasting materials and colours when making this and infuse it with your own personality dare this relaxed but highly creative piece so you can tell that that's a translation because it doesn't fully work um, I'm going to make it and then report back to you so that will allow you to decide if it's something you like the look of I quite like the collar that's not a hood because it's like a, like a slight stand up but with an overlap um, the pattern, I've had it all printed, including, I thought I'd have the instruction book printed, even though it's not huge, because of the fact that um, it, its instructions may not be great, um, so we'll see. And while I was there, I thought I'd give one other one a try, so I've gone for this one, which is a top with back with sleeves, bit of a theme there for me. So this is 004, there's the image there. So really like the look of that. So it says, 
Style, comfort and a great look for this loose fitting and easy to wear top. It's back wind sleeves and marked high waist will really enhance your curves Ugh. and large neckline means it's quick and easy to throw on for instant chic. There's box pleat at the upper body sleeve bringing extra volume and flair and it's preferable to opt for a jersey or knit fabric to keep the model as fluid as possible and also a nice hang to the sleeves. The sober elegance of this top makes it a perfect wardrobe staple. Again, weird translation there. The size on the back is the same, but really interesting pattern piece. I think 2024 is the year of the interesting pattern piece. Look at that bit there, look at that. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, not a huge amount of instructions again, but it says you look at that. Look where you create that bit there. That looks super interesting. So I shall see how I go. I will report. So it's very few pattern pieces. Um, I will report back to you. Excuse me. I will let you know if there are any goods um, and whether I like the pattern or not. I did find another pattern company while I was at it, but we'll start with this one. By the way, this printing again done by CLC Prints, loving them at the moment. Uh, so that's that. Now let's talk about some things I started sewing up um, from the giant cutting out session last week. So since then, I've had the um, virtual social and it was lovely chatting to people in there. Um, so hello to everybody who came, that was really nice um, and I have started putting together the quilted jacket. I will put pictures in here of me in them, even though if they're not finished so you can see where I'm at. I'm not sure if I've made this too long, I mean I like the deep pocket, I went for the pockets the different way round. I made a bit of a schoolboy error as they say and I did accidentally cut the back in two pieces but I don't think it matters because um, it just creates the back less stiff when you've got a quilting jacket. Um, so I think I've decided, I did reuse the binding from the edge of the quilt on the top of the pocket. Um, whether I've got enough or not, I've decided I am going to bind all the seams inside. A, it would make it reversible and B, um, part of my theme of finishing things properly this year. Whether I've got enough of the yellow or whether I'll make some, I don't know. But the Hevea jacket is a nice one to make up. Sizing wise, I'm not sure if the crop is too crop and this is too long, but we'll see how we go. I could probably lose a bit off the bottom because the pockets are very deep. Um, I can't wait to get that finished. I then am almost finished the... Um, Stella joggers that I wanted to make into a smart jogger so I'll put a picture in hopefully they might be finished by the time I put the picture in um, they're looking like this I'm thinking of putting a dart in the back so it needs less gathering so a bit like the walk boldly pants because that way you can sort of do the gather with the dart I'm liking the way it looks I had a bit of hassle with my overlocker I put some thread on and it was like a much thicker thread which I didn't realise and it made the loop stick out beyond the edge so I had to have a good fiddle around and I changed all the settings and in the end I changed the thread and that seemed to fix it. My overlocker clearly didn't like the coarser thread and I didn't like the way it felt either but got to learn from these. I bought it from a charity shop and as someone said... Um, in the virtual social maybe that there's sometimes there's a reason why things are in a charity shop i'm sure i will find a use for it even if it's like basting or something um but yeah i think they're going to be a good option for when you want something smartish and i've nearly finished hopefully again i might be able to put a picture in here of finish the marigold jumper by, by closet core it's one of the closet core crew ones so this is how it's looking with this lovely sleeve like this with the elastic in and the way it shapes. It looks really nice on, I'll put it in here. I'm supposed to be putting the waistband on it. However, I'm not sure if I want to now I've got it this far. So I'm going to have a look at that. This was the toile anyway before I make it in the nice fabric, which was um, one I got from the rag from Barry's in Birmingham. 
but I had a bit of a trouble with the sleeve following the instructions and I was so glad I was on the virtual social because I had in my head how I thought the sleeve was going to go and when I was reading the instructions there was like one step rather than multiple steps and I was like what's happening and Christine said to me trust in the process and then I wasn't sure and then I looked Christine got hers out and showed me and I looked at the picture because sometimes I look at the picture to see how the finished look is and then somebody else said to me maybe the steps further on and I read on and the finishing part of the sleeve was after you'd done another step which was really different so you do the first part of the sleeve like the ta uh, the, the Naya t-shirt by Tammy Handmade while the piece is still open then you attach the sleeve together and then you finish the casing so it was a very different technique from one I'd come across before and so again my brain was thinking too far ahead expecting um, a step to come and then being confused when it wasn't coming and actually I, I, I should have practiced what I preach which is to read on and actually it was there it was two steps further down which was interesting so yeah I've just got to do the stitch in the ditch to finish this it is quite fiddly but I think worth it um, to make a nice sleeve finish and then I will get on with the the actual one I need to make so that's that and I realised when I finished this I actually had the wide leg trousers on in this I was in like a full loungewear when I tried it on oh here's the fabric in case you can't remember this is the fabric I'm going to make one in so I'm really looking forward to doing that that's going to be great so then I have mostly sewn up just get it the um version of the vintage dress that I love that I couldn't wear I've still got it in two pieces because I'm going to cut out another one before I finish it so this is the top I made it in this scuba so there's the top part and it's empire line and then the bottom is four pieces cut on the bias this scuba is super soft obviously this is less drapey than some fabrics because it's scuba um, and the bias doesn't really have the same effect in scuba, I don't think. Thinking what I want to make another version in before I um, stitch this together. But it's definitely one where I think I need to trace a pattern onto paper because it's one I will be coming back to. I did find, I don't know where it's gone, some velvet um, that I thought would be good to make one in. But don't get that many opportunities to wear velvet. Although maybe yeah, velvet is a more everyday outfit than we think it is but yes I'm happy with how that's turned out and of course which I'm sure you're all waiting to hear is how my first pogo nip went but I managed the welt pocket I've managed the cuff and the neck so here's the the cuff uh, the neck and the like placket so I do need to put buttons on there and it's, yeah, I could I could have got that to line up but I was thinking about a lot of things and this is a twirl I, I think it's fine here's the welt there it is there look there's the welt pocket so that's worked well and on the inside I put um, a white lining piece which is what you do to hide the pocket bags and bits which are under there you can't see them they're all sort of tucked in there um it's a nice pattern i haven't decided yet if i'm going to do a waistband with elastic in or just cuffing and the same on the sleeve because sometimes that thicker elastic can not fall so i've got to decide i am now cutting out another one i'll show you what i'm cutting that out in so I've had this uh, denim for a while. I bought it from the Oxfam Superstore. It had, they had it in there once. It's a good amount. It's quite heavy. I think there's a lot here. So I thought I'd make that with that for the, the placket and the neck. Um, this is a little Johnny. Um, it's almost like sort of, um, I don't know. I always think of that as like Western. I don't know why, it must be the colors. It's not really Western, is it? But um, 
so I thought that would go really nicely with that to break it up and the colours so I know that I can't remember her name the lady who runs Violet Pattern Company I'm so sorry I can't remember her name but she shared one she'd made in denim so I thought that would be a good option I could line it I know I'm going to cut that out this weekend and I'm from prowling around as well looking for other options before I get to the big fluffy one because I'm a bit scared of the big fluffy one I definitely know that if I do the welt pocket it'll have to be in a different fabric and I think I'll do that neck piece in a different fabric as well there's one other thing I've sewn up where is it it is another week of unfinished things isn't it well, I've sewn up the majority of the twist front dress. See, I knew it was here. So I've sewn up the majority of this. Let me turn it the right way through in that fabric. Um, I mentioned this last week that I'm powered by my lovely viewers to, um, to do it in the fabric I wanted. Uh, so um, here we go. That's how it's looking. And there's the twist. Interesting, because this is such a soft jersey i think it's pulled the waistband down a bit so i might take the shoulders up a bit recut the arm side is that how you say it everyone arm side arm cycle the armhole recut that a bit lower so it's not too tight it might be all right um because i think it's almost like the, the twist is a bit too low but that might be because of the drape of the jersey so i'll put a picture in of it how it is now we'll need some kind of sleeve um so i'll have a think about what sleeve this was when i was having the problem with the overlock a lot i'll show you can you see that look and it was all down to the wrong thread so yeah i can't wait to wear this it's so soft I'm very excited about that. So that's where I'm at. Lots of in progress, not a lot of finished, but we we get weeks like that, don't we? However, the good thing was I finished all bar one of my work from home cosies. So if you haven't seen that episode, do go and watch it. I've had some great responses from that. Um, there was lots of, um, I'll put some pictures in here, lots of uh, snugglies with brush back and things like this where I'm just like I said I feel a bit like Margot from the good life wearing these like long dresses but it's just a nice option for on a day like say it's really grey outside and I don't you know feel very inspired but I just feel a bit nicer and I can easily go out to the supermarket to Tesco's or whatever in this um so what's coming this week coming is the reveal of the pogo knit party so i better get on with my second one and finish my first one and also it will be my week of me made wardrobe so that'll be coming this week what i've worn and then i'm going away with christine so i will be filming while I'm away with her so you'll have to wait till I come back to see what we get up to I'll put some pictures on Instagram so if you don't already make sure you follow me on Instagram and I think that's all I've got planned at the moment so if you haven't go and watch my episode with uh all my results of my Mimo wardrobe and if you don't subscribe why not please do because then you'll keep up to date on everything you can even hit the notification thing and it'll tell you when I bring an episode out and as I say, if you don't follow me on Instagram, do hop over and do. I know there's some more things coming, but I can't tell you what they are yet. And as soon as I can, I will. I hope you have a good week ahead. And if nothing else, I hope it's gentle to you and you get some moments of joy or peace within it. And I'll catch you again soon. Bye.